Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be cutting out the spare wheel well on the A3, ready to make room for a central exhaust and eventually a bit more aero at the back. So one boot floor. Now currently the exhaust runs down there and you've got the wheel well which is really really deep it's about 10 inches deep now there's no real weight saving to be gained from losing this but there is currently no room for any sort of diffuser because so bumper off get the car up in the air on stands and we're gonna look at uh, cutting this wheel well out and immediately you can see what we're working with so all the space the diffuser wants to occupy it's all here essentially Diffuser wants to be up in here. I'm going to leave the end plate of the chassis rail in, you can actually see where that is, but it'll be cut from this height all the way across here, gaining us nearly 200mm of room to play with at the back. I'm going to do a bit of working out, whip the exhaust off, and then we might get chopping. Car's up in the air, I've cleaned up the rear panel, so I know roughly where I'm going to cut. Now before I do, I'm going to have to pop the battery out, and also you've got this little sort of reinforcing plate which I think is in some way linked to the towing towing eye which is right there. So I'm going to drill these spot welds out to get this plate out. So I've centre punched them, pop them on, drill the spot welds out, pop that plate off and we're going to make our cut all the way around. I've marked up where I want to cut, I've got that plate out inside and um, I really just want to get cutting now. Now you see it, and now you don't. Well, quite often I'm a little bit uncertain about things, but there is no going back from here. So the boot floor is gone. The sheet that's gonna cover it, this is not cut to size at all, but it's essentially gonna sit like that. Obviously cut, fixed nicely. But if we go underneath that, leaves all this lovely space for a central exhaust and a really nice diffuser. Next up is filling the hole. So we've got a sheet of card in there. Now what I've done, I've actually used my contour gauge. So I've used a contour gauge to pan across the back panel to get the profile. So that is the profile of the inside of here. Right, well, I've done the easy bit. I've made the plate, which is gonna go in here. It's all sort of profiled to the back there, but tricky bit, I'm gonna try and put an upstand on the back here. If this works, then great. It'd be a case of rivet it in. If it doesn't, it'd be over to you for ideas. It started off really well. So this end, see if I can show you. Got quite a nice sort of profile on it. The bend was going really well because that's just a simple in out. That bit actually fits really nice, but come to this end, oh, it just, just didn't, just didn't work. Let me throw it in, show you. So, oh, it's just, it's just not happening basically. In here, this could be made to fit pretty well. But when you come across to this side, I just, I just couldn't, there's too many bends. In, out, out, bend, little lump there, another one there. I just couldn't make it fit. So I'm gonna abandon that, I've come up with another idea. I'm gonna try it first, and if it works, I'll show you what I'm doing. Two days later. So you join me on Tuesday morning. Got a day off work to uh, get a bit of progress in. So I've just tidied up the hole. I've actually cut this out nice and neatly. I've cut this back. Originally I left a lip there to give it stiffness, but it wasn't much of a lip. It didn't really add much. It's already pretty floppy and uh, it was just going to be a moisture trap. So we've cut that off. I've got the cross members prepared. Don't know if I've showed you them. I think I have. So we've got one here quite near the back and then one at halfway. So they're going to be welded into the chassis rails here and underneath in here. 
So what I've made these from, rather than traditional angle, I actually made them out of a T-section profile. So it's really stiff and it gives me the opportunity to drill the T-face for splitter and exhaust mountings. So it's all cleaned up underneath. I'm gonna fire up the welder and we're gonna tack them in. to have knocked you over at some point. God's sake. So that's all welded up. Um, bars are in, absolutely solid. So that's all welded. I've ground that just on top where the, uh, the heat of the weld came through. So I'm gonna give that a coat of etch primer and all of these, and I'm gonna clean up underneath, ready to give the whole lot some proper paint. See you in a moment. I got a little impatient. It's currently in matte black. I hate it, but the bars are welded in. They're all welded, painted underneath, ready for a bit of seam sealer. So next up is mounting the way the panel goes to the back panel. Now I was trying to fold that profile, hasn't worked. What I've come up with is a bit of extruded alley angle on the back panel, like so. so one piece there, I've got this piece that I've shaped, which will sit there and be level with that. And then we have one more piece here, again shaped, which will sit like that. So they'll get riveted to the back panel. Gap in the top will be filled with seam sealer. I'm sorry, but it's just how it's gotta be. And then we will uh, get the alley panel curtain in. Finally. So that's in. On this side it actually looks pretty tidy. Not quite as good on this side, but a little bit of seam sealer and some black paint and you'll never know. So that is in. The only real job left to do here is rivet the plate down on there. However, before I do that, I'm gonna do the seam sealer now on the underside, across that back panel, and uh, across the bottom. A bit of seam sealer and uh, and maybe tomorrow we'll get the plate riveted in. Time for a little update. So the alley angle is on the back panel. I've seam sealed it all. So it's now a nice smooth transition under here. So I've just started cutting the alley sheet. So that is now cut to profile in there. Everything you can see that's in seam sealer is gonna get painted black as well. So I'm gonna keep cutting this until I've got the radius across here. And once I've got a final coat of under seal on all the underside, I'll be able to rivet the sheet down tomorrow morning. Righty then people, it is Wednesday morning. The weather is absolutely horrendous, which is great because I plan on doing some painting today. So we're currently inside with the door shut. So we've got some cross members in, they're all painted. I've given the, given the floor a coat of etch primer and a coat of matte black just to get it black. I'm now gonna throw some body color in here before we drill and rivet the sheet and get that in. Okay then. That appears to be dry. There she is. That's how it's gonna sit then. Right, we will drill some holes. I'm gonna pop a few just rivets through the holes just to hold it in place whilst I drill the rest and uh, once I've got all the holes drilled, we'll whip it out, we'll put some seam sealer the whole way around, and we'll drop it in for the final time. It's exciting. Right, that's all the way around, fun job. Right, I'm pretty sure you can see I haven't got a bunch of space in here with the door shut, but this is ready to go in. So all that's really left to do, peel off the protective film 
to see if we need to do any finishing on some of these edges, which I think we might. Get the seam sealer on, and finally, I must have said this 12 times in this video, finally get this in there. Right, there we go. One really nice anodized silver sheet. Now I'm gonna be very careful with how I touch that before it goes in. So we'll get the seam sealer on and off we go. So I'm using brushable seam sealer because that's what I've got and that's what I've used on the underside welds. In an ideal world for something like this, you would actually use a corked seam sealer, more like a tiger seal sort of thing. But we'll see how this goes. We'll get this done reasonably quickly because it's water. Because I don't want this to go off before the sheet is on. So that's all the way around. And I'm also going to put it across the tops of these because I want the sheet stuck down so there'll be no resonance. Right, I think that's our seal. Let's get the sheet on. This is it. Get some rivets in the holes quickly, make sure we're lined up. This is exciting. Quite a few rivets in here, you know. And that's it. Excellent. Let's, let's get fixing. And there we have it folks. One boot floor riveted on. And you know what? I love how that looks. Really pleased couple more holes to drill from the center which I'm going to do from underneath and that is that done and there we have it I am so happy with how that looks it was well worth giving the inner arches and stuff a coat of paint because that now looks fantastic and now with those rivets through the middle absolutely solid no rattles and it's really really firm very pleased so as you can see we now have an unbelievable amount of space under here. So what I'm going to do right now is just underseal basically everything you can see. So I've already seam sealed it, that's had a bit of time to dry. So I'm just going to get a load of underseal and make everything under here black and give it a bit of protection. So we've got a little bit of cardboard up, stopped getting anything on the suspension. I've never used this before. So we've got Hammerite body seal, apparently with added wax oil and corrosion inhibitors. Let's just spray a bit and see what happens. Well, it's definitely black. That's the first objective. Interesting, interesting texture. It seems all right to me. Hmm, what weird stuff. Quite messy, although I won't lie, that could definitely be down to me. Oh wow, I think I've got paint. I think I've got paint on this lens. Ta-da! It's all black. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna let that dry for an hour, give it another coat, and in the meantime, I'm going to start chopping the bumper ready to go back on. What I've actually done is just remove the lower valance for now. So I'm going to offer that up and see how it looks with no rear valance. So it's on. We get the garage door open so we can have a bit of a better look. I warn you, it's miserable out there. I wasn't joking when I said it was miserable, was I? I don't like it. I know a lot of the Honda boys do it, but to me, it just doesn't look right. Right then, it's Friday evening, time for a little catch up. So like all things, this has snowballed. So got the alley sheet in, all really good, really happy. Boot is painted, everything's looking first class. Of course, I've got no way to put the battery now. Not a problem, let's move the battery. So I'm gonna bring the battery inboard. 
original thoughts were battery somewhere in this location but the meth pump has been here for many years there's not enough room on that side there's not enough room on the floor so the meth pump needs to move the pump sits on this bracket so what i've done is made a little bracket here it's bolted down through the floor countersunk bolt so the pump can then sit there so the battery can now go here so what i've done i've put a little shelf there i will tidy all this wiring up when i'm done that little shelf takes the weight of the battery and then i just need my handy battery cross member that i've used for many years piece of alley channel so the battery goes on the shelf the channel goes across there the neoprene on the face of that to give it a bit of protection and that's going to get bolted back and that is a battery in place with the meth pump remounted in here this end obviously to the battery this end i am going to be running to the roll cage foot i've already taken the paint off there to expose it for a good earth and then promptly lost that bolt here we are Ta-da! wrong tool for every job there we go battery in meth pump remounted all looking pretty smart i think oh right then guys i think it's pretty fair to say that as an overall task that has taken a bit longer than planned and involved a fair bit more work than i originally thought however we are finally done so boot floor is all gone looking pretty nice under there i think so then we can come under the car under here we now have absolutely masses of room exhaust is in there i even clean that up not something you're ever going to see again but masses and masses of room for a diffuser under there now so with that gone we also had to remount the battery the battery is now in remounted the meth pump is moved i've re-tidied up all the cables to all of this everything was a bit of a rat's nest in here i've actually ripped the load out so big job but finally done wheel well's gone loads of space for a diffuser batteries moved meth pumps moved tidied up inside we're going to call it a day there I hope you guys have liked the video. I hope this has been interesting. There's been loads of talk over the years about people cutting wheel wells out, but not actually seen that many do it. Hope you guys like the video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.